Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click. Recently, I had a conversation with a few community members who wanted to implement a governed self-service type of environment using ClickSense Enterprise. But they had some questions on how to control the visibility of all of the fields that are displayed. So normally, you can create a master items list that will show only the expressions, measures, dimensions that you want to use, and then a non-content admin role will only see the master items. However, if you go to data properties or if you're in the fields of the visualization, you still can see all of the fields that are available. So I'm going to show you how you can control that. So I'm going to start this from scratch so you can kind of see how it works. So I am logged in with my account where I am either a root admin or a content admin. And then in another session, let's say Firefox, I have a user or consumer. So let's just create a new app, call it sales dashboard, open app, and then I have some data and we're going to grab our orders and I'm also going to grab customer data and products data. Okay, I'm just going to accept the defaults. Keep in mind, this is not about preparing the data model using visual data preparation. It's more about showing the governed self-service aspect of utilizing a published app, but giving those the ability still to create their own analysis from an approved base app. Okay, so we can go and edit the sheet. So right now, to recap, I am the root admin or content admin. I'm creating an app that's going to be available in my work area that I will then publish to a stream that can be consumable by others. So to keep it simple, just create a bar chart, category name, sales, sum of sales, give the chart a name, total sales by category, and then I'll create another visualization just for completeness, use a KPI, and we'll use sales again. And we'll call this total sales. Okay, so the first aspect of creating the master items or populating the master items, I can take any of these visualizations and just drag them and drop them on the panel on the left and then click add. And this creates reusable visualizations. And the concept here is that you can create these if you make adjustments to the properties, then you can just bring them back to the canvas and make adjustments if needed. But it also allows as a means of controlled or governed visualizations for other users that are going to be able to create their own analysis from this base uh, approved sheet. So let's create some measures. It could be as simple as something like sum of sales. And we'll call that total sales. Create another one. We can say sum of sales minus sum cost and call that profit. And now we have two measures or expressions that we've defined. And then for dimensions, we can just choose from the list of ones that we want to display, such as category name, click add dimension, city, add dimension, country, and we can create a drill down dimension. Maybe I want to start at country, and then I want to drill into city, and then into customer name. Again, just giving you an example of populating these dimensions. And I'll call this location drill. Okay, so we have our base app that we're going to publish and we have some dimensions, measures, and visualizations. So at this point, as the content admin, I'm going to go into my management control panel. I'm going to go into apps, grab my sales dashboard, publish it. I'm going to publish it to the sales stream and click OK. So now we have a published app. So now I'm going to switch gears and now I'm logged in as a consumer and the name of this user is Sally. 
So I'm just going to go to the sales stream and you can see there's the sales dashboard. Now let me show you where inherent a problem arises. So as this consumer user, I can see the sheet and I could perform my analysis. Now if I wanted to create my own sheet, I'd click edit and it basically allows me to duplicate this. So I click duplicate and what that will do is it'll create my version of this analysis from the approved sheet. So now I could unlink these visualizations and I could make my changes if necessary. And you can see I have full access to the properties panel. If I go to the master items, notice that we don't have fields list and I just have the measures and dimensions that I defined previously as the content admin. But notice if I go to the chart and I click on data and if I click add, I have all of the fields that are still defined within the data model. So granted, they can use these on the left panel to create new visualizations, but they still have access to select from this list. And that's what we want to prevent. So what you do in that aspect is we go back in as the content admin or the root admin, whoever user uh, that we have available. And what I'm going to do is we're going to unpublish that particular app. So we go back to our sales dashboard and what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that app. Okay. When I duplicate that app as the content admin, it puts it back in my work area. Okay. So I'll just refresh this and there's my sales dashboard. So now back as the content admin, what I must do is I need to set a variable called hide prefix. And then I need to rename the fields that I don't want to be available in the user interface. So going back to the user as Sally, as I mentioned, when we went in here and I clicked either the expression editor, you can still see all the fields. Or if we went into the uh, visualization dropdown, you can still see the fields. Just to give you an example, maybe I don't want to display phone number and I don't want uh, order ID displayed. So what I'm going to do is within the content admin, I'm going to go into the data load editor. And then I'm going to set a variable. And that variable name is hide prefix. And then we set the prefix to some character, like a special character that we're not going to use. So what I'll do is I'll put, I'll put a single quote and we'll use a percent. Okay. So hide prefix is now set. That means what we're going to do now is we're going to name any field in our data model with this percent symbol. And when we load the data model, any field that has this as a name, it will not show in the UI. So being we created this with the visual data preparation or the wizard tools, we have to unlock. This is the script that's generated by the UI. So we're going to unlock that and we're going to go and hide the fields that we don't want to display. Now, keep in mind, if you are linking on some of the fields with those field names, you have to rename those fields as well. So I mentioned phone number and order ID. So let's look to see where phone number is. It's in customers. So there's phone. So we're going to do is use an as or an alias, and we're going to say as single tick percentage phone. Okay. And then we had order ID and there's order ID. So we're going to say as single tick percent order ID. Now keep in mind being that we link this with our order ID in another table, we have to find that other table and rename that one as well. In here, I don't see order ID being used for anything else. So if we just do a quick search for order ID, I can see that's the only one and that's it. So we're good to go. So by adding the percent symbol as the prefix and then using the variable hide prefix, when we reload our app and publish it, we should not see order ID or phone number in our fields list. So I'm going to click load data and we're good here. And then I'm going to go back to the management console. 
and I'm going to now publish. Now remember, we're in sales dashboard one, which was the duplicate. So we're going to publish, select the stream, sales. This time we're going to replace an existing app and we're going to choose the sales dashboard app. Click OK. And then publish and replace. Okay, so now we have that new app using that high prefix. So now we'll go back to Sally, who's the consumer view. And I'm just going to refresh this interface here. And now if I go into this list and I choose data, and I wanted to make a change to this field, and we go into the UI, you can see that order ID is not available. And you could also see that phone number is also not available. So you basically would put the percentage symbol in front of all the fields in your load script that you don't want to be displayed in this UI. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, I found it pretty intriguing. Um, ideally, you would think that if you set up master items and the fields list is not displayed and that user is not of content admin or root admin, that those fields would not be displayed. I am checking with the products team to see if there's a security rule to control that. If you know of any better ways to control this, please let me know in the comments below. Other than that, thanks for your time, guys, and I'll see you on the next video.